Today I want to talk to you all about what is one of, if not the easiest, LPS corals to keep in the saltwater aquarium hobby, candy cane corals. Now typically we like to do videos on each of the individual strains of coral that we farm, and we're currently farming three different strains of candy cane corals, but the information for these three strains are so similar, they just look slightly differently, so we're going to group all three of them up into this one video here. Candy cane corals are corals of the genus Calastria. Now there's a couple different species here, but most of what I believe we encounter in the hobby are the species Furcata, Curvata, and Echinata. And I believe we're actually farming one of each species currently in the farm. It's difficult to identify these corals to a species level, but I'm fairly confident those are the species we're farming. Now these corals also go by another common name, which is trumpet corals. They were initially given the name candy canes as they felt they resembled those old school hard candies. And some of them do have stripes, which makes them look like the candy canes we're all familiar with. Personally, I think the trumpet coral name applies a little bit better to them. I think they look a little bit more like trumpets than candy canes, but the candy cane name has really stuck and that's almost always the common name you'll hear for these corals. Candy cane corals come in a small variety of colors. Typically, you'll see some different strains of greens, some teals, or purple strains with green mouths. Now, this is a branching coral that's very fast growing, and each polyp will eventually form a second mouth, and as the colony continues to grow, those two mouths will grow away from each other, each eventually forming individual polyps. These are not an aggressive coral by any means. In the farm, we're much more worried about their neighbors stinging them than them stinging their neighbors. I've seen people take different strains of this coral and plant them side by side in an aquarium to where as it grows into a large colony, you'll get different chunks of the colony being different colors of candy cane. I know I've seen one colony that was probably around 150 heads that was roughly 60% neon green heads and 40% purple heads with green mouths. It was clear the neon green heads were growing a little bit faster, so they were slowly becoming the bigger chunk of the colony, but it was really cool to see the two strains of candy cane kind of growing right up beside each other and almost looking like it was one massive colony. A big part of the reason why candy cane corals make for such great beginner-friendly LPS corals is that they tend to be very forgiving of bad water chemistry. They aren't that picky about flow as long as they aren't getting blasted by it, and it's the same for lighting. They're not that picky about lighting as long as you aren't cooking them right under your lights. When it comes to water chemistry, it goes without saying that all corals, including candy cane corals, appreciate stable water chemistry. But newer aquariums are notorious for being all over the place with their water chemistry. Either your nutrients like nitrate and phosphate are way too high, or they're at zero, both are bad. And your major trace elements like calcium and magnesium could be all over the place. And a candy cane coral in this environment will do fine. It's probably not gonna grow as fast, it's not gonna be as puffed up, it will maintain its coloration. Candy canes are notorious for staying colored up regardless of the conditions. And that's a big part of why this is a great beginner friendly LPS coral. Obviously as the tank matures, you're gonna see this coral start to grow a lot faster and be puffier, but it's a great confidence builder in those early days when the tank is struggling. And as your tank matures, you're gonna see this small frag slowly become a large colony quickly. When it comes to lighting and flow for this coral, I like to say low to medium, but it's hard to give a really solid recommendation because it does well in most conditions. You're really just trying to avoid that really high energy environment right underneath your lights, getting hit directly by a power head that corals like Acropora prefer. But you know, midway up the tank in a decent amount of light and flow, or at the bottom of the tank where it's almost in shade and getting not much flow, it'll do well in both those conditions. It'll maintain the same coloration in both those conditions. The only real difference is it might be a little bit puffier in lower flow and a little bit you know, more retracted in higher flow. But it'll grow about the same and it does very well in both those conditions. So just make sure you're not blasting it and then don't worry too much about where it's placed. Let's talk feeding. 
LPS corals in general are a very popular group of corals to keep because of their often exaggerated and obvious feeding responses. And there's a ton of benefits to feeding corals. They tend to grow a lot faster, they tend to be puffier, they get better coloration, and they're overall healthier animals. But it's important to understand that most of the corals that we're keeping in this hobby can survive off the light alone. And there's a big caveat with feeding corals. Yes, I love feeding corals as often as possible, under the condition that you can keep your water clean. If your phosphates and nitrates are too high and you're still feeding your corals, you're doing more harm than good. So if you can't keep the water clean, and specifically with newer tanks where they tend to have nutrient issues, don't feed the corals if you can't keep those phosphate and nitrate levels down. But if you can keep them down, you can keep them stable, then feel free to feed the corals as often as possible. They will benefit greatly from it. Candy cane corals are a great coral to feed. They get much puffier, they grow faster, and with very regular feeding, they'll have those feeder tentacles out 24 seven. Again, just make sure you're keeping the water clean first, and then feel free to feed these corals. If you wanna learn more about the candy cane coral strains that we farm at New Dawn Aquaculture, you can find more information on them at ndaquaculture.ca. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're gonna be doing more videos on the rest of the coral strains we farm, the dry goods we use to farm those corals, and the captive redfish we sell. So thank you for watching and stay tuned. Thank you.